Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. So it is the weekend and we are just setting up for our night here at the farm camping. We've already got our tent set up that was left up from a couple weeks back, but it is already quite late because I had work today and Michael had some things to do. So I'm going to jump on the bike and try and go and find some firewood so that we can have a fire tonight. We need a fire for dinner and it gets really, really cold, obviously because we're getting closer to winter. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over and get some firewood. You guys are gonna come with me. I'll start getting base camp set up. So Mark was mowing. <laughs> anyway, let's go and get some firewood. Need fuel first. Good to go. Yeah, good to go. Good to go, let's go. All right guys, we are next door. I've just grabbed a little bit of wood up the front there. I don't know if you can see, but way back out there is where our farm is. And this is what it looks like. I only really need like, like kindling type stuff. We've got some big old uh, fence posts that we want to chuck on there and burn as well. Um, I might just get a couple more things and then go back because I'm low key shitting my pants. There's wild dogs out here and I'm like, by myself, I'm just getting in my own head, so I need to get gone. All right, that'll do. I'm just gonna hold onto this rope because I can't tie it. <laughs> Let's go back home. Could work the strap out? Nah. <laughs> I was like, I'll just hold it. But I think I'm gonna have to load a whole heap of cardboard underneath it. It's all still quite thick. If you wanna start that, I'll go around and get some of the other stuff from the other side. Yeah, and then go down and get like a big, Got a big log. Yep. <laughs> All right, the fire is going. Mark was about to go and get some old fence posts and chuck them on. Keep it going all night, hopefully. Also, our dogs are here. Dolly is Dolly. The little puppy last time you guys saw her. And then we got Boo over here, who is in desperate need of a haircut. <laughs> We've got them on chains because we don't have any secure fencing and I don't want them running off onto somebody else's property and be mistaken for a, uh, a wild dog because they get shot around here. Anyway, we've got some drinks in the esky. We'll crack them out in a minute and um, touch base with you and see where we're at. See you soon. All right guys, look how pretty it looks. I got the light on my head. I turned it off because obviously, there goes Michael with his big lamp head. <laughs> All right, so we're actually drinking, I'm drinking rum and I got Michael some Canadian club, but this is like an extra, extra strong version. Anyway, I'm gonna try his because I want to see what it tastes like. Just tastes like normal Canadian club. I've got my metal straw. In Australia, we don't have plastic straws anymore. How good's that? Here you go, Michael. Your drink, I had a sip for you, tested it. It's not poisoned. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, guys. The taste of rum literally just throws me back to being 15. <laughs> so bad. All right, so we set up a little table here. 
I don't know what Michael's cooking. Basically, a beef stew. I bought a special, let me get it. <laughs> let me get it. Dinner in here. Is it like a cast iron? Cast iron. Oh, look at that. Do you need to give it a wash out? Nope, it's pre-seasoned, ready to go. You put this in the coals, you put your dinner in here, then you put coals on top, and it cooks it like an oven. So we're just gonna peel some spuds, cut the carrots and onion, and the sweet potato. Alright guys, so our dinner is all in that pot now. We had it heating up on like pure coals and then when we put the meat in there, the meat just started burning. So I think we had it, we think we had it too much on the coals if that makes sense. So we've sort of moved it back out, still on coals but not completely on coals. And we put a fair bit of water in there too just to make sure it's all bubbling over and stewing. I don't know how thick it'll be, it might be really runny but who cares, it's camping. We've never cooked in one of these things before so it's our first time, I'm not expecting... I'm not expecting five stars. It's not too bad actually. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to give it another five minutes on the coals. And then we'll take it off and just let it rest and eat it when we're ready. I'm almost two drinks in, Michael's still on his first one. This is just your little reminder to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then subscribe. We're almost at that big 1K. All right, guys, so I am... <laughs> Piss. <laughs> no. I'm five drinks in. How many have you had, Michael? Five. No, you haven't. <laughs> it's not a drinking contest. Michael's had three. Close to five. Anyway, so it's been about an hour and a half in between the last take and this one and we're actually ready to start having our dinner now. So we've got some naan bread just here, cooking in the fire. All right guys, Michael's gonna try his first. What's it taste like? Burnt? It's got a little charcoal flavor to it. Mm, it's burnt as hell. It's not burnt as hell. So I'm going to have my dinner now, and uh, I guess we will see you in the morning. Night night. Well guys, we are about to hop into bed. But Michael pumped up the bed earlier and there were two holes in the mattress and air was leaking out. We found these little black rubber things in the shed, so hopefully they hold. Hey Michael. I need my undies. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. The air mattress stays afloat. Inflated. It stays inflated and we're not on the floor in the morning. Good night. Good morning guys. It's a beautiful morning here. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. Scott is still in bed as usual, as expected. My first job this morning is going to be to start getting the strip graze area ready for the cows. I stayed in the strip graze all last night and today I'm gonna to make that area a lot bigger to try and utilize some of this long grass we've got growing around the place. So that's my job for this morning. And then when Scott gets up, We'll assess what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do some stuff in the veggie garden. So until then, I'll see you then. Good morning. So the air mattress stayed inflated, but it was the worst sleep. It was freezing cold. It's like the tent is on a little bit of a lean. So every time I moved, I would roll down closer to Michael. So Michael would be on the very edge of the, be of the bed. And I knew I kept rolling over because every time I moved my um, that way there was so much space. I'm just like, wiggle wiggle, Michael, roll over. Anyway, 
So I've slept in like I always do. It is so annoying. I am a really, really deep sleeper. Somebody could break into our house. Oh, probably shouldn't tell you this. Somebody could break into our house and I would have no idea. No idea at all. So dinner last night. Dinner was below average. It wasn't the best meal I've ever had. It did have that charcoal -y type flavor. I think we left the pot on uh, to preheat for too long and it sort of just like burnt the meat really quickly. But hey, it was the first time we did it. It was food. We ate it, so it wasn't unbearable, but it wasn't the best. I ended up buying like a six pack of Bundy's and Michael a four pack of Canadian Club and we got through those, but we didn't even touch the wine. We had wine just in case, but no, didn't get to it. So we've got wine for tonight, I guess. So I've already gone over and checked up with Michael to see where he's at and um, he's almost finished the strip grey, he's just got to adjust a little bit and he mentioned that we were going to be doing some work on the veggie garden but I'm not too sure, we haven't really spoken about that just yet so I'll go back over there in a minute and see but for the moment I'm actually going to give the dogs some water, I've already given them some breakfast and I'm just going to wash out the bowls and stuff from last night and then we'll get on with the day. Here we have uh, the new strip greys Michael just set up, I think he's just whipper snipped it a little bit more just to make sure there's absolutely no grass touching this wire because if anything touches this wire then it will short it out and no electrical current will run through it to give the cows a zap if they try and get out of it. Alright so we decided that we're actually going to go down to the vegetable garden and do some work down there where there's like this new tomato trellis thing that Mark wants to try out. We do have three like volunteer tomato plants and after doing some research apparently they can grow all year round in our area of Brisbane. We're gonna try and transplant those and see how they go. Last year, we did plant, we did grow tomatoes, but the fruit flies got to them before we could, and there were a lot of fruit flies. So we're hoping that with it being like the cooler time of year, fruit flies won't be around as much, and we might actually get some. Before we go down to the garden, Michael's just gonna show me some things that he bought from Bunnings yesterday. I can obviously already see one right here, which is what I requested and what I wanted. It's a big broom. <laughs> Look at the head on that. A big broom to sweep out the shed. When my cousins and that were here the other weekend, when it rains here because there's no like gravel around the front of the shed, the clay in the soil gets super sticky and it just goes everywhere. Sticks to your shoes, goes all throughout the shed and there's nothing you can really do about it. So I got this broom, well Michael got this broom for me. Hopefully now that it's all dried up a bit, it should come off fairly easy. Right, we got the boring stuff. The boring stuff. Concrete. Post mix. Concrete and post mix. We got some fertilizer which we're going to use in a minute. Fertilizer. We got some weed matting. Oh, cool. Gloves. New gloves for me. We got some peas. We got some twine. So the mossy sal. And something a little exciting. Oh, here we go. Worm eggs. Oh. I didn't even realize you could get that. Mm -hmm. Compost worm eggs, packed fresh, equivalent to 1,000 worms. Recycle organic waste at home, great for boosting worm numbers, the most economical way to get into worms. There you go, very cool. And these curtain rods. Yes, we're gonna put some curtains up in the sheds. <laughs> no, we're gonna put some curtains up in the garden. Veggie garden. All right. That broom's a little bit stiff. I think it needs to be worn in a little bit or something. So in this garden bed here that we want to transplant the strawberries into, there are two just volunteer tomato plants that have popped up. We're going to try and dig them out. There's also one over here with the potatoes. That's a volunteer one as well. Um, and we've got this little strip outside of the garden bed. Well guys, it's now 2 in the afternoon, about 2.30. We went to go and pick up Reese from his mum and realised that Michael's car battery was flat. So we're now trying to use my car to jumpstart his car so we don't have to worry about it later. It's flat because the camera battery died and we chucked it on charge and just left the battery going but not the actual car running. But we also had it on for a long time last night, listening to music. So. Uh, 
yeah. Okay, so we ended up transplanting those tomato plants and set up the new trellis. So here's the trellis that we sort of constructed this morning. This is how to look. We got some twine there tied off to a bamboo stick and then that's the uh, the tomato. The tomatoes don't look that great at the second because they've just been ripped out of the ground but um, hopefully they come back. I put an egg at the bottom of this one because I know that Jess from Roots and Refuge puts eggs under her tomato plants when she plants them. But yeah, we'll see if that if they come back, see if that one's any more superior than the others. Anyway, the sun's going down. We probably won't record much more today but I'll keep this video going for tomorrow. We'll take the camera home and give it a good charge and I can start editing this video. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. So it is the very next day of the last clip that you saw. It is very windy, so I hope you can hear me. We're just here at the new strawberry bed. Yesterday we went ahead and we laid some of this weed mat. It looks very tarp-like, but it's not like a tarp. It allows water to go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling apart the strawberries in that garden bed. I'm going to take all the runners and re-transplant them into this garden bed. We're actually going to burn little holes where we're going to put the plant uh, throughout this weed mat. The weed mat's going to be really good for locking in moisture because it sort of acts as a bit of a mulch on the top. We've never ever used this before so this is a lot of trial and error for us. I have got some bricks keeping it down. I think we might need to look at getting some type of pegs though to peg it in because bricks just don't look that great. We ended up pulling it over and then burying it down the sides of the garden bed but on the ends here we've just put them down and put some bricks on top of them. Hopefully it works. I've also got some bricks in the middle because it's not one big piece, it's two separate pieces. That other piece was um, flying up in the wind. We're not going to transplant all of the strawberries across because there's going to be more than enough to do this bed. Um, but whatever is left in that garden bed, I'm actually going to pull out and replant in it anyway. Because that garden bed has not had the soil turned over for quite a while so we really need to do that before we laid down that weed mat we sprinkled a whole heap of fertilizer over the top we're actually pretty excited to see how that weed mat goes with locking in the moisture because strawberries are a plant that needs plenty of moisture but we'll see how we go love is love love is love Guys, the little blowtorch thing that we were using to burn the holes into it, it's actually out of gas. So, I don't think we thought about that. So we've got 15 strawberry 15. plants planted into this new garden. And I've still got maybe five or six in that bucket that I need to plant. And I only touched a tiny little section in that back there. So it just goes to show how many bloody strawberry runners we, we do have. Our tomato plants that we transplanted yesterday. They don't look that great. They look like they've been through a bit of a traumatic experience which they have being ripped out of the ground and then replanted but I'm confident they'll come back. Anyway that was a bit of a bummer. If we can't find something else to put the holes in then we'll have to call it quits for today. But I did end up having some extra runners left over that didn't go in that garden. I ended up just putting them up like that. I'll look after and make sure they're not going to die and then I'll give them to some family because I did say that when I had runners I'd give them to some family but I didn't, so. So I'll definitely be dropping off some strawberry plants once these guys are alive and thriving. Well guys, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to our channel. If you made it to the end, let us know in the comments and we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.